everybody. Welcome back to Lunchtime with Compassion. Yes, hi everyone. It is so great to have you with us today. My name is Anna Durante and I am Head of Events here at Compassion UK. I've been around for about six months now. Hey, and I'm Phil Briggs. I'm the Senior Partnerships Manager in the north of England for Compassion UK. And I've been with Compassion just under five years now. And you know, each week we will be focusing on a different country. And this week, as you know, it's Mexico. And um, also you'll see that there's a chat function. We would love to hear from you. So drop in where you're from, where you're tuning in from. And also if you have any questions, feel free to drop them in there as well. We have a team ready to answer them for you. And finally, when it comes to our time of prayer, um, let's just put in prayer requests. We want to be praying for all the children over there in Mexico. So feel free to use that chat function. Absolutely. And, you know, we just want to say to you a huge thank you uh, for your support so far. Compassion UK in Ireland are supporting 1,676 children across 209 projects in Mexico, which is just incredible. Yeah, that is amazing. And, you know, even despite the restrictions over in Mexico, we, our church partners over there have been able to support the families and the children. So I just want to give you some really cool stats. Um, we have managed to deliver 122,789 food packs, 82,520 hygiene kits, and we've provided medical support to 4,210 individuals. Whoa, that is just amazing, isn't it? Yeah. Praise God, absolutely. Let us give you an overview of what the next 30 minutes will look like for you to engage in. Uh, so we've got um, Graham Kendrick who will be sharing the story about a family who are facing particularly dif difficult circumstances in this season of COVID-19. And we're going to hear about all of that shortly. We're also going to hear about how our church partners are responding to this need in this time. So we would love you to participate in that and just hear um, firsthand what's happening in that place. Yeah, wow. And then Phil's going to be um, interviewing one of our team over in Mexico so you can hear the right realities that they're facing over there. So um, yeah, that's going to be an incredible time with him, um, followed by some time of prayer together. And then we have a video as well that we want to share with you just towards the end of our time. Fantastic. Hey, why don't we uh, get straight into this right now? Amazing. Hi, I'm Graham Kendrick. I have a story from Mexico and a bit of a song as well. So like half of Mexico's citizens, uh, Jacqueline and Francisco and their three children live in poverty. Before the pandemic struck, uh, the family just scraped through on Francisco's day labor job as a farmer. However, when the pandem pandemic arrived, uh, job and income were gone. Then, to make matters worse, a flood hit their home and many of their possessions were destroyed. How could they provide for their children, for Evelyn, Miguel and one-year-old Santiago? Well, thankfully, Evelyn and Miguel are registered in Compassion's Child Sponsorship Programme at Jesus Friends Child Development Centre, while Santiago is in the Survival Initiative, which helps pregnant mothers and their babies. Jacqueline said... When the water flooded our house, I thought this cannot be happening. But thank God the centre always supports us and they did this time too. I'm so thankful, she said. The centre staff arrived, they cleaned my house, they helped my husband dry out the furniture and dispose of what was damaged. Through the Disaster Relief Fund, Compassion's church partner helped them to refurnish their home with beds and a stove so they were not forced to move into a community shelter with its increased risk of COVID-19. They also covered the family's water bill, unpaid since the pandemic began, so they can maintain hygiene. Jacqueline said, Compassion also gave me a mosquito net canopy to protect Santiago from the Zika virus, a common disease here during the rainy season. And how could we have faced these problems alone? But thanks to the centre's support of my children's sponsors, we know that we are not alone and we are able to build a better place to live. 
so this song is really a mixture uh, between a lament uh, and uh, a prayer. Oh Lord, over the nations now, where is the dove of peace? The winds are broken. Oh Lord, our precious children stop the tools of war. Have mercy, Lord, forgive us, Lord, restore us, Lord, revive your church again. Let justice fall like rivers, and righteousness like an ever-failing. Hey Alex, great to meet you. Thanks for joining us today. Hi Phil, uh, you're welcome. Thank you for having me in this program. Thank you. Ah, uh, not a problem. It's, it's an absolute privilege to be able to speak to you Alex and spend this time with you today. Um, and uh, to be able to hear firsthand the challenges and, and the complexities that you're facing in Mexico due to the whole COVID-19 pandemic. Um, we know that this COVID pandemic is affecting the poorest of the poor um, the hardest. And um, we, we just want to understand, I wonder if you could describe to us um, what it looks like in Mexico right now, the, the challenges you're facing in your communities, um, the, the cities and the nation itself. Well, Phil, um, right now the purest families have been treated by COVID-19 in multiple ways. One of them uh, has been the unemployment. So the families haven't had a regular income to meet their pri priority needs. Other ways that families have been affected is to keep health as they are afraid to go to hospitals since they can be spread. Um, lack, of, lack of water is also also a problem since the purest communities suffer of not having water. So keeping hands clean is a, is a great challenge. Mm, the danger that our children are facing because of COVID-19 is not to have a near hospital, but people around is getting sick and dying. So children are afraid of that. Children are more susceptible to these risks because they don't understand what is happening. They feel scared, they see their, their parents emotionally affected, and children feel stress. Uh, so the COVID-19 makes life more difficult because families uh, cannot be normal. There is no regular income, children cannot go to school, and they have to stay at home. A small house with many people living inside in a social toxic environment. Some of the challenges that our children are facing is, is not just lack of food. Of course, there is lack of food, but that's not the biggest problem. In some cases, they are suffering violence of their own parents because of the crisis they are living, the employment, and general the shortage in their communities. And now in, in Mexico, the economy has begun to, to reopen according to the traffic lights that all the, the country has in, in the territory. But right now, Mexico is the sixth country in reported cases and is the third highest coronavirus death rate globally. So that these numbers are shocking because you know the danger is everywhere wow wow alex that's that's um it's really impacting me listening to you talk about all those different challenges from hunger to lack of clean water to children being stressed and violence against them and, 
and uh, the, the the lack of job opportunities obviously the unemployment you just mentioned then is a whole cycle of difficulty in itself isn't it in this season and um i'm just sorry so sorry that's the reality right now but um so appreciate you sharing um well we're going to pray about everything you've mentioned alex in a, in a minute but i wanted could you explain could you share with us um how the local church partners in mexico have responded and adapted in this time um i mean how are they operating so that they can continue to care for the for the children and protect the children who are sponsored in the programs and and expand their work to support the wider communities as well in this pandemic what's happening well phil all, all compassion's program activities have been suspended since mid-march and and all the churches have been unable to open their temples even on, on sundays so they have had to find different ways to pray preach the gospel but a lot of churches are working in food security and all the beneficiary families have received food every month. These actions have impacted more than 29,000 families and that means more than 120,000 people that was providing with food. Oh, and that's amazing. All the children have received hygiene kits. Uh, to stay healthy. All these pantries also carry information on child protection, hygiene measures against coronavirus, easy to prepare recipes, and a message of hope for families. So one of the initiatives that lo the local churches that has impacted that is that one agronomy engineer is teaching to children and youth how to grow vegetables in their home family gardens so today they have had their first harvest of different kind of vegetables like radishes tomatoes lettuce and children feel so happy because they they feel useful when they take care of a little plant and they can see the god's creation and how he cares that little plant and how he cares mo much more for them other families have received backyard animals like chicken or, or pork, and the families take care of them. They feed them, and later they can sell or they can eat the animals. So that's a, a, a good point for and, and a help for these families. Another strategy has been to give classes using the technology, and families receive some videos every week, and children learn and are evaluated through an application. Although it may not be applied in all the communities, but it has been a great impact for many families and children. <clears throat> now the children are receiving, receiving the support or gifts, but the most of the, of the children are receiving them as a food or are a, a gene material because that's the principal need right now. Wow. I mean, that's, that's just incredible, isn't it? That's great to hear about um, how the local church has adapted its, its, its way of functioning this time to, to preach the gospel, to reach everybody else that they need to reach, to serve the children with such creativity. It's, it's really inspiring. I particularly love the, um, the, the picture of the children growing their own food and taking care of that um, and seeing God's creation. Thanks so much for sharing that, Alex. It's great. Um, I wondered if finally you could describe to us, um, and this might be difficult, I'm not sure, but um, how you could describe to us what you think Mexico might look like in three, six months time, maybe. Well, Phil, today the things look better, but I don't think that's good because the society is waiting for a new flare up of COVID-19. So in general, things, things can get worse. Children may not be able to go to school until January of next year, and maybe some of the children will lose the next school year. Many people have not been able to find a work and are desperate. Even people have chosen to steal and crime has increased in this time. Mm -hmm. Violence by drug cartels has also increased. 
in general, I think the future in Mexico does not look good. But we know that God is in control of everything, uh, and we trust only in He in Him. Sure. Oh gosh. So we we understand that um, you know this the the impact of COVID nineteen right now in Mexico is going to have a a much immense and long term effect on on your community and your country um, for months maybe years to come and um that's the reality of the situation as you face it right now so i really feel alex if if it's okay with you that uh, we would love to stand with you we'd love to pray with you right now and believe for god to work in and through these situations that you're facing right now um so for all of those supporters watching us at home right now and we would love you to join us for this time of prayer right now you'll notice there is a chat function at the side and we want to be able to read and see your prayer requests as we go so that we can stand with you and you can pray with us as well at this time. So please join in in the chat section and, and we'll be able to, we'll have a team of people who will be responding to uh, your comments and your prayers as we go. But right now, everybody, let's pray. Let's lift Mexico up. Let's lift Alex up in prayer. Thank you, Lord. Heavenly Father, no matter what, you are still God. Jesus, you are King of kings and Lord of lords. And Father, I thank you right now for your incredible love for every single family, child, compassion staff member and local church leader um, and others in this time right now. Your love is incredible. But God, I want to pray specifically right now that... Um, you would just protect everybody from the spread of this virus right now, Lord, that you would put up a hedge of protection around every single person in this time right now, Lord, and you would surround them with your presence, your spirit and your love and your protection. And Lord, for all those who are living in tightly packed neighborhoods, God, and, and living in small, um, small homes with lots of people, God, and for those with no safe and clean water and and any other challenge that Alex has faced today, God, we pray your provision and protection into those situations right now. And God, ask and believe for your favour upon them. Father, I thank you for all the compassion staff and the, and the church partners who are reacting in, to this difficult season right now. And, and I, I pray that they would be able to continue to deliver food parcels, to be able to continue to provide health care and sanitization and counselling and and all of the things that are just assisted and helping in this season. Um, Lord, I pray for the safety of these people in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord, we thank you because we know you have the control of everything. And we, we ask and we pray for the children, all the children in Mexico that are suffering, some of them violence, some of them abuse, some of them don't have what to eat and we want to pray for them and ask you for because they have food for they have hope in this difficult time god yeah bless these little children bless their families god and we also want to pray for the leadership of mexico First, we want to pray for the president of the country. So yeah. you give him the guidance. You can give him the wisdom to take the decisions. And also we, can, we, we want to pray for the Compassion National Director, our brother Omar Villagran. So give him wisdom. Give him all that to take the best decisions for, for the churches. And we pray for all the pastors, we pray for all the directors, all the people that is involved in the projects. Please God, help us, help us as a facilitators, as a staff of compassion to be there with the people who need. Thank yes. you for this time and we uh, pray in Jesus' name, amen. 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 So, wow. 
Thank you, thank you, Phil, for, for this opportunity to be here. Thank you to all the supporters because you as a supporter, you are making a huge difference and you're saving lives in Mexico. Thank you, dear supporters. God bless you. Well, Alex, thank you so much for that. I, I mean, we, we're thankful for everything that you're doing at this time um, to reach these children. And we just, we just love you and we stand with you and we're for you, Alex. And, uh, you know, it's been a real privilege to spend this time with you, just hearing um, all of what you've got to empower us in terms of what's happening in Mexico. God bless you, Alex. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you, Phil. God bless you. God bless you. Bye. Bye for now. Wow, Phil, that was such an incredible interview. Um, really insightful to hear what's really happening over in Mexico. And I just love what he was saying about um, how the children are planting vegetables and just really being the hands and feet in their communities. Absolutely amazing. Absolutely. But we know the reality is this, that COVID-19 is affecting the poorest of the poor, the worst, and the children, you know, are the most vulnerable and susceptible in this time in this climate but what we want to do right now is we would like to play you a video and this video is just incredible it's a thank you video uh, from all across the world from church partners and um, inside of that video there's a specific story um, surrounding a family in mexico watch the video donations and heart of giving has been a driving force to keep these children going and alive. And we, we want to really express appreciation. Especially uh, families that are starving and so on, and are not able to put food on the table. The church has come in to be able to provide uh, so that they're able to support them. It's just beautiful to see the body of Christ working together. You know, you in the UK, US, USA sponsor, and us here in, in the field, how we're racing together to support and to attend the need that our children are facing. So uh, thank you, actually. Thank you so very much for the generosity during this time of uncertainty where we all need help and we're trying to help others. So this is really an action with a lot of compassion. Pues el impacto que ha sufrido ahorita nuestra familia al comenzar esta pandemia de COVID ha sido unas cuantas. Yo me quedé sin trabajo. Eh, prácticamente nos vimos sin techo también, sin una casita. Dios como que enviaba eso al momento porque esos mercados llegaban cuando no teníamos para comer y eso es una bendición para nuestras vidas que, que, que eso como que poco a poco fue cautivando Dios haciendo sin la ayuda de la iglesia de compasión ¿no? No, quizás no estuviéramos ni aquí Be able to hear from all the different countries, um, from the ones that we partner with from around the world, and just to hear the impact that everyone's generosity has had already, it's just amazing. And also just to hear that story from the family in Mexico, and to be able to hear that how important it is with the church partners stepping in, it's incredible. Absolutely, you know, uh, and we've said this for, for for those who live in extreme poverty, everything about this COVID nineteen season is is stretched and enlarged and, and much more amplified the, the, than we understand because of the risk and the fear and the uncertainty that, that they're all facing in this time. And particularly, you know, um, the reality is this, that, that there are cases of life and death and, and those living in poverty 
are the most vulnerable children in those contexts are the most susceptible from the effects of poverty in this COVID-19 season. You know, there's no safety net and access to, to safety and clean water is literally a luxury for some. Um, and if parents, you know, I mean, like in that video we just saw at the end, um, you know, losing their employment and not having work just causes all sorts of challenges. And if they can't go out to work, then, then the families can't eat and, and there's worry and all sorts of things around that. So. Um, just incredible that the churches, uh, local church partners and Compassion and supporters are responding in this time. If you feel like you would like to donate to the COVID appeal, there's going to be a button that pops up in your chat function. You can click straight on there and it will take you to be able to donate straight to the appeal, which would be incredible. Um, well, I think we're coming to the um, end of our programme today. It's been amazing to hear this update from Mexico. We really hope you've enjoyed it. Absolutely. And hey, just to let you know, um, we're having a two-week break, um, but we will be back with this in September. We are actually moving to evening sessions once we come back in September. So they're going to be airing 8.30pm on Tuesday. So the first one will be September the 1st. So put that in your diary, 8.30pm, and it'll be on a Tuesday. But now we'd just like to say, we'd just like to thank you once more, and, um, and thank you for tuning in with us today. God bless, and bye for now. Yeah, bye everyone.